Hi folks, Dave with DBS Tech Talk and today we're going to talk about the Sennheiser HD 700s. These headphones were sent to me by a subscriber so thank you very much for sending them over for a review. It's been a fun few weeks having these and uh, getting to hear them and, and uh, now I think I'm ready to give my thoughts. So first off comes in a really nice package has a nice box to it and uh, very clean you know just says HD 700 up there has a little bit of Sennheiser branding down below and it's just a very nice clean package and then when you open it up you get another hard case inside so when you take that out Move that to the side over here. And it's just a nice, clean, hard case, not a portable um, carry case. Has a nice shimmer to it, has a really nice little um, texture to it, has the Sennheiser emblem there in the middle. And then when you open them up, there's your headphones, nice foam, very good um, protection. Don't have to worry about it falling out or anything of the sort. They just sit there snugly. Take it out and first thing you're going to notice is the cable is huge. <laughs> long. Really long. It's uh, about 10 foot long. I think it's 3.3 meters and then it has really nice strain reliefs on it. it has a really big quarter inch uh, adapter it says Sennheiser on the connector I don't know if you can see that on camera and uh, gold tipped it's not going anywhere very good strain relief has that fabric feel to it it's built kind of like the Elex cable uh, flat cable little stiff never truly straightens out always has a little bit of a kink to it but I don't mind it uh, then it goes to the split nice and a little itty bitty Sennheiser logo and then you go to rubber and it goes up to 2.5 monos with some interesting um, proprietary connector Overall, the cable, it's all right. It's not the greatest. The thing that would make it better is if it was a little shorter. If it was six or seven foot long, uh, it would be perfect. But being 10 foot long, it's just a little on the, on the long side, but I don't mind it. The gentleman that sent it over did send over a third party cable, uh, one that he found on, on Amazon. And uh, it's not bad. It's a lot shorter. It's about four foot long. So it would be good for the desk. Has a nice little strain that's made of metal spring of some kind. Uh, 3.5 and then it goes to a metal split and then it's got the um, red cables. There we go. Spit, spit it out there. And uh, the same connectors because you have to be able to put them into the headphones with the little cutout. It's not a bad cable. I actually didn't use it. I don't prefer it. I like the Sennheiser cable a little better. Plus with the way that my setup is it's a little easier to reach over to the couch and and just kind of sit without having the strain. The headphones themselves when you pick them up you first notice they're extremely light. I think they're like 13 ounces, something along those lines, and you, you definitely notice it. They are very light. Plastic, everything feels plastic um, for the most part. Got a little sci-fi sci type um, styling to them, something that maybe would come out of Star Trek. Very nice padding on the headband. Uh, Nice and thick, plush, rebounds nicely. Pads are the same, uh, very deep. They're shaped like a D 
which makes it nice. Uh, it goes around your ear. They're nice and deep. You don't have to worry about them touching your ears or anything like that. A little bit of padding on the inside to cover up the driver. When you put them on your head, they just adjust very easily. Don't touch your ears, as I said, at least for me. And they just... Yeah. They're like pillows. I, you can't really tell that you have them on. I mean, they're very light. Clamp force is okay. It's a little, it's, it's a little tight, but it's not like suck your, suck everything in type, um, or push everything in. I guess it would be. It, it, they, they feel like you're wearing earmuffs. That's what it feels like. I mean, they're just comfortable. Very open. You can hear everything going around around you. Uh, no, no isolation. I mean, <laughs> your neighbor's gonna hear what you're listening to with these on. Build-wise, quality um, very good. Comfort very good. Pads do remove if you need to replace them, but uh, no need. These things are very comfortable. If the review was stopping right there, that would be 10 for 10. I, I do not have a problem one iota about that, about the build quality and uh, all comfort. But unfortunately, there's more to a headphone than just how it feels and how it looks. The Sennheiser HD 700 is a almost analytical, almost neutral um, headphone. It's very close to being that has just enough coloring in it to keep it from being, you know, completely flat across the board. Um, so I would call it a analytical-ish, neutral-ish headphone. It is not for everybody. This is a sound that you have to really desire in order to enjoy these headphones. V-shaped and a little to, to an extent um, with massive and I mean massive sound stage. They are wider than wide and there's an old kid's song that I used to sing at church called Deep and Wide, and these go deep and wide. Um, and inside that deep and wide is precise placement of every single instrument, every single sound, every single movement that you hear. These headphones are accurate across the board when it comes to imaging. Um, in incredible and the separation is spot on. Soundstage imaging amazing. The mids on these are lush, romantic, realistic, slightly recessed, but are detailed. I mean, they have incredible mids. These are probably the best mids that I have heard on a headphone as far as tone and tim timbre and uh, texture and detailing. They, they just are so smooth and so, so clean and just lush is what I call them. no complaints with the mids so again if you're going off of build quality comfort soundstage imaging separation and mids these are a 10 all around but unfortunately we have a couple other areas that we have to cover bass
these are not for bass heads. Um, if you like that rumble and the thump and the super impactful bass, shy away from these. These are not it. These are more if you want the true details and the pure textures and the extension of bass. These headphones are for you. They have very good extension, amazing detailing. You can hear everything in the bass. Have a really nice texture, real nice tone to them. But they lack that punch, that thump, that impact, that musicality funk, um, aspect. This is just, the bass is here. This is what it's supposed to sound like, and here it is. You don't get that a little extra um, to them. It sounds great, at, and, it, and, it, and it's very, very smooth and, and detailed and, and balanced and all that. It just doesn't have that err to them. That I want to get that rumble. I want to get that little bit of more. And then the treble. Now I, I know about the all the 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 reviews that have come out and how that these are are known for being for their treble. And I took all those reviews and put them on the wayside and said I want to make my own decision because I like treble. And so I sat down and I really listened to them and I analyzed them and I took all those other things I've heard about the the HD 700 and I tossed them to the side and I cleared them from my brain and I said are these murderous are these ear piercing eardrum blasting treble no no they're not but what they are is a forward bright detailed treble The, the treble is definitely noticeable in these headphones. They're a bright headphone. And they're a forward headphone. They're aggressive in the treble. But they never come across as sibilant or sharp or edgy. Unless you have them powered wrong. But they... If when, when you have the proper amp paired with them and the proper DAC paired with them, they become very airy, very detailed, and very, very pleasant treble. has a peakness to it, has a smoothness in, 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 to them, but they're always on the edge of being too much. But they never cross over but they get to the point they know where the fence is and they go and they they rest their hands on the fence but they never cross it I mentioned amps here on my desk um, I have the AU and X7S with a music hall DAC 15.2. I have the topping stack, which has the uh, A30 amp and a D30 DAC. And then over to farther, which isn't in my camera view, I have a SMSL Sanskrit, um, which is powering or, or sourcing a Cavelli tube hybrid CTH and also a APPJ PA1502A tube amp. Out of everything that I have, my least favorite is the Music Hall and AU and X7S, which really hurts me because I love my X7S. But because I don't have a balanced cable for the Sennheiser, I can't tell you what it sounds like balanced. 
the single ended on the X7S isn't the greatest. So I, I don't recommend it on that setup. The topping stack. That setup in itself is very analytical, very clear, very detailed, and somewhat on the brighter side. And to me, it takes the HD700 and makes them too bright. And at times you do get sibilance, and at times you do get that sharpness and that ear piercing sound. Especially in songs that have um, a lot of sopranos or, a lot, or high piercing music, uh, a lot of cymbal work or things like that. And I mean, the topping stack sounds great on some songs, but if you get a lot of trouble going, they can be murderous. So, not my favorite, but it's not bad. You just have to be aware of what music you listen to. Between the two two um, tube amps, either the the hybrid or the um, pure tube amp, I can go with either. Um, the CTH does dull out some of the dynamic and some of, of of the treble on the HD 700. It makes them more warm and a little darker, and you do remove you, you do miss some of that clarity that you can get with them now the sound stages are still there and, and all that it's just the details are a little more muffled and then on the APPJ I love that setup that that's to me that's my setup for the HD 700 it adds a warmth to the vocals it brings them up just a little bit makes them a little more forward um, more balanced, let me not say for it, uh, more balanced with the, the rest of the sound and it tames the treble just enough to take that bright edge off so instead of putting their hands on the fence they're more standing about six inches away from the fence and the, the, the headroom and the sound stage and the details and all of that are still there and then in the bass, it adds a little bit to it. You get just enough of girth to it that you can get a little bit of impact. So I, I recommend the HD700, if you're going to get it, that you have a tube amp, a, a true tube amp. And uh, I think that's the best mix for these. not bad on the topping but the topping I only use it when I truly want all the details all of the clearness and 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 all of that to come through but if you were to sit and listen to that for for hours it gets very fatiguing too bad warmth gooey lush vocals perfect mix. So the HD 700 from Sennheiser. Build, comfort, sound stage, imaging, and detailing, top of the line. Mids, amazing. Bass, lacks impact, but can be helped with with a good amp and DAC setup. The treble forward and bright, airy can be tamed by an amp. So, do I recommend them to certain folks, people that like treble? And that are more in for the details and for the the overall just wide stage and you want to know you want to be sitting on the front row these are them if you're looking for a little bit warmer sound a little more immersive sound but with still the details and and, and all and not as wide of a sound stage these aren't for you so hd 700s are are good but they're not for me. 
This has been Dave with DBS Tech Talk. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.